Okay, so today we are back with the quarantine grind with a Christmas special, no less, which I really hope you're going to enjoy. My area is back in lockdown again. It's one of those areas responsible for that new strain of the virus that's got everyone a bit concerned, closing off travel from the UK, etc. But it has meant that I've been able to play for the last couple of days, about 2,000 hands. First time I've been able to play in a while because I've been working and had other commitments, so I really haven't been able to put in the volume recently. Um, but it seems like the games have gotten a lot tougher. Um, and you already know the rake's high, that we need a really high win rate to beat 10 and L. But alongside that, it seems like people have been developing very advanced strategies in my absence, and the standard of play has really risen. So today we're going to have a look at some of these strategies, and we're going to evaluate them to see if this stake has truly, finally become unbeatable. Let's take a look. Okay, so our first hand, we've got pocket queens on the button, and our opponent opens the three big blinds on the middle position, and we elect a three bet, get snap cold call um, from the small blind. So we're always seeing some of that um, strategy coming through, some, some cold calling range in the small blind, you know, very interesting stuff. And when we see three, five, ten, you know, obviously I'm going to have quite a strong range, but what, what our opponent is going to do here a lot is going to be checking. That's the conventional, you know, check to the razor kind of thing. Um, but what he's going to do here is he's going to incorporate um, a new kind of donking bet size here. Um, so he's going to go for about 4x pot. And I really like this because you're going to be able to balance this out really nicely. Um, obviously, you know, he's going to get some folds from maybe when I have, you know, ace-king offsuit, which is going to be great. Uh, and then he can he can do this with maybe a set. Um, and he can do this, you know, because he's going to get paid by queens, right? So, you know, he could just jam a set here and then and then balance that out with some with some maybe some flush draws or, you know, some some other hands here. But I really like this as a general strategy. And he's probably going to be using this sizing um, with his whole range here in this spot, I think. Um, obviously, because of how many how much fold equity he's going to have. Um, and we unfortunately for this guy, we are going to be able to call on this occasion um, without a spade and, and with the overpair. Um, but I do have a lot of sympathy for this play, and it's something that I'm definitely going to look at look at um, in the near future, trying to incorporate. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll bring up his whole cards. You know, it's one of those one of those things, really. You know, he, he blocks kings, obviously. So I, I've got a lot of sympathy for this play. Um, and unfortunately, on this occasion, he doesn't quite get there. But you can definitely see where he's coming from. This is the kind of thing that we're looking at today in terms of our strategy evaluation. And the new things we're seeing coming through from, from 10 and L, which are making it a lot tougher for us. So let's, let's go and grab another hand and, and see what else we can find. So in our second hand, we have pocket fours here um, on the cutoff and the uh, under the gun limps. And we elect to isolate for four big blinds, which I think is good. Um, the button calls and, and somehow the uh, original limper finds a fold. And we move on to the flop, which is king 7, 10. Now I'm going to be doing... Um, some betting here for a larger sizing, but I think you know with this hand, and we want to elect to check. Um, our opponent's going to going to call with you know a lot of 10x and 7x and some draws, and we don't really want to put more money against those. Uh, he does let's check behind on this occasion, and the turn's a king, and we're going to stick to our strategy of trying to show this hand down. Um, and our opponent checks back the turn. Now we see a deuce on this on this river, and we think we maybe extract some value from this guy with an ace high that he's checking back. So we do decide to go for the bet, um, and our opponent does find the call. Um, with the Jack Nine of Clubs, now um, this is this is a, a high level strategy that I've not yet seen before. Um, basically, what this guy is thinking is that I can have um, you know an eight nine uh, that didn't bluff the flop um, that's now betting this river that he can certainly beat, and then alongside that he can beat other stuff such as um, such as eight nine of another suit that I didn't bet the flop with um, that I'm now betting the river as a bluff. So obviously he can beat a lot of hands here and I, I do have a lot of sympathy for this call and it's this kind of bravery um, that we don't see from enough players that is now starting to creep into their game that is going to make the game a lot harder for us to beat in general. So um, let, let's have a look at an, another hand and see what else we can find. Okay, so in our third hand here we have Ace-King uh, of Diamonds um, middle position and our opponent under the gun opens and we elect to, to three bet. Um, now the, the button incorporates um, a cold calling strategy here uh, and everyone else folds and we see ace six eight uh, with two diamonds and we elect to to check not really being afraid of many turn cards and and having quite a lot of the board locked up and, and our opponent goes for, for a half pot bet now he's going to have some draws of his own and um, he's also going to have um, maybe some sets like six and eights sixes and eights and he's going to have some two pairs and maybe some ace eight and stuff like that so he is going to want to bet his draws as well um, and i like the larger sizing too um, we're going to elect a call, uh, and we turn the nuts, um, which is obviously a good card for us. And we're going to do some checking here against this guy. Um, you know, he's still going to have um, maybe a couple bluffs that he wants to use, and then obviously against all his flushes, we're going to get his money anyway. Um, he elects a bit again on the turn for a, for a, for interesting sizing, 
um, half the pot uh, and we elect to, to go for another call. Now uh, on this river which is the eight of spades, very interesting card. Now our opponent's left himself with less than a half pot shove behind um, which, is, which, is, which is excellent stuff. Um, and we elect to go for another check. Now our opponent's going to have you know sixes, eights, maybe eight six, ace eight. So he is going to want to have some bluffs. Now when the diamonds get there there aren't that many bluffs left. Even 10-9 of spades and things got, got to a straight. So um, he's not going to have many bluffs. So he is going to need to find some bluffs. Now, what kind of bluffs is he going to have in his range that he that he cold called with um, pre-flop and then bet two streets here? Um, it's tough for him to find them. So he has to he has to find some more bluffs. He has to get creative with his bluffs. Um, we do have a call. Obviously, he can have some houses, but we are going to have to call this one down. Um, and he was able to find the 4-3 of hearts as a bluff here, which I really, really like. And as I said, he's not really going to have many bluffs here. So, so to find a bluff like this, knowing full well that a lot of his bluffs um, and a lot of his uh, value from the flop does end up getting stronger, a lot of his bluffs make hands, um, he's going to need to find some of this stuff, some, some of these more unconventional bluffing hands to use. And, and I particularly like the less than half pot river sizing uh, that makes it really look like value. Um, I, you know, a really high level strategy here and that we can really dig deep into and, and maybe look to incorporate it into our game in 2021 so that we can really try to keep on top of these games. Um, but let, let's look into another hand now um, and see what else we have. Okay, so in our next hand we have pocket aces on the button and the cutoff opens to 2.5 um, and we elect a 3-bet to 8. We could make this 9 a little bit deeper, but I think 8 is fine too. Um, and our, our opponent elects to 4-bet to 19, a little bit of a smaller sizing. Um, he might be trying to put us in a tough spot with our, the weaker parts of our range with the stronger parts of his, um, who really knows. Um, but he is going to have, you know, obviously the um, queens and, and kings and, and jacks and ace king and stuff like that. Um, and maybe a few bluffs like, you know, king jack and ace five and maybe some other stuff going on in there. Um, and uh, obviously he's running to the top half of our range and we are going to elect a five bet jam on this occasion. Um, and now our opponent um, is in a really tough spot. Obviously, um, we're representing a very strong range here with this five bet jam. Obviously, we're going to have aces, ace king, kings and stuff like that. Um, and against that, you really need to... to choose your call downs really well and, and this guy does elect to call on this occasion which I think is I think is a really good decision with the 10 nine of spades obviously you don't want to get run over you know you want to send a message um, to the table just to let everyone know that you know you're here um, you're not going to be folding uh, to these five bet bluff jams that are always happening at 10 and L so you want to make sure you have some call downs to, to really send that to send that strong message to your opponents. Uh, so I, I, I really like this as part of that strategy. Um, and, you know, we do, unfortunately for him on this occasion, flop top set and, and he doesn't manage to get there on the river. Um, but I really like how he's, he's strong and sturdy. And, you know, if we're going to be bluffing here with something like, you know, ace five suited, you know, then he's going to have... You know a good portion of equity here as well as sending that very strong message that we were talking about so i think that this is a very important concept to, to try and drill into our heads here um and and definitely something else that we want to take away for the future um but let's let's grab a few more hands we do have some left so let's go and take a look at those now so in this hand we have the ace king of clubs on the small blind uh, under the gun opens to three and there we get a call in middle position we elect a three bet to 16 um, healthy sizing there, under the gun folds and middle position calls. Uh, we see king queen four and we elect to size up here, um, looking to get value from you know lower pairs with with a heart in them, and uh, maybe some queen x, you know, and we want to jam on some turns that are favourable for us. Um, definitely want to charge those draws with the ace of hearts as well there. Um, Jack of spades on the turn, not the best card in the world, but if we check here and we see an ace or a, or a 10 or a 9, um, we're not going to be very happy about that or a heart. So we do have a tough spot, we do elect to, to go all in. And our opponent does call, um, and a very tough spot here, King-10 offsuit, um, that he called the undergun raise, and then my 16 big blind 3-bet. Now, you don't just want to have 9s and 8s and ace-queen here in this spot. You want to make sure that you can incorporate some other hands in there so that you can have some other top pairs on this board. Um, so King-10 offsuit seems like a very good hand in hindsight to choose to, to incorporate into this range. Um, another thing that we will need to pick up on and, and, and learn for the future but again, one of the reasons why this game is becoming so tough, it's so hard to predict these players and um, they're playing such balanced strategies. Um, let's move on to another hand and see what else we have. So another hand to take a look at here, we've got ace jack offsuit on the small blind. The button makes it two and a half and we elect a three bet to 11 and a half and he decides to call. We'll go for a small C bet here with the ace jack, um, with the ace of diamonds um, and he does call. Um, the turns are six of spades and I think it's just a bad card against this kind of opponent and we elect to check and um, planning to fold or maybe to get a hand to showdown. 
He does spend some time before checking behind and then the queen on the river and we decide to stick to our plan and not do any bluffing here with this particular hold holding. Um, we do check um, and he checks behind. He does have the ace four of spades. Now, um, obviously not raising the flop here and um, with a gut shot at back door, flush draw with an overcard. The turn he picks up, you know, that nut flush draw with, with, a, with, with still obviously that same gut shot. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be too, doing too much bang here. You don't want to put too much pressure on an opponent that's that's checked to you and uh, is not going to have a lot of strong hands in his range. You don't, you don't want to pick up those pots. Um, you want to make sure you have some flushes on the river when you check behind, especially some nut flushes. That seems really good. And on the river, obviously, he hasn't made his hand. And, you know, there's not that much in the pot. Only 40 big blinds. Not much difference to your win rate. So he, he does elect to check back here. And, and he does have some showdown value, obviously, um, with that ace high. Um, but I like the idea of, of putting next to no pressure on with a very strong holding here and because it does mean you can have some stronger hands on that river. Um, and when you make that, when you don't make that hand on the river, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to give up and that's unfortunate. But, um, you know, it would have been very difficult for me to read that situation if he had made his hand on the river. So uh, another thing to look at here. Um, but let's go ahead. We've got a, a couple more hands to look at. So let's go and do them now. Uh, now in our next hand, uh, we have pocket kings on the button and it folds to the middle position who's going to open here. Now you can choose a lot of different sizes here that make a lot of sense. Obviously you want to pick up the blinds and antis in these games. The blinds are really important in these games, much more important than in non-anti games. So you want to pick a size that puts enough pressure on the big blind. Now I've been experimenting with 2.9 or 2.8 recently. I feel like that puts enough pressure on the big blind. But there are apparently some other strategies floating around that I do think have a lot of value. Um, this guy decides to go for an 153.9 big blind open and I think this has a lot of merit. Obviously you're going to want to try and balance out this opening range so obviously you want to put you know ace aces in there as your strongest hand but you're going to want to have some bluffs as well so if you are blocking an ace that would be the best kind of hand to use to block some of your opponent's calls uh, so you can really give yourself the best chance to pick up those blinds and antis that makes such a big difference uh, to your win rate um, unfortunately on this occasion um although we are in a tough spot we do manage to find the call with kings and our opponent um he does have the ace 10 offsuit so he was using that ace blocker that we talked about so i really do like that and if you're going to choose this um and use this sizing um then you're going to want to have some bluffs as well so using that ace 10 seems really good and obviously he won't be uh, using many combinations to in incorporate into this strategy but just using one of those combinations he's probably got all that mapped out and knows exactly what he's doing um so we do uh, see the flop which is 10 high it does have some some equity and unfortunately he doesn't get there on the river but I do like the way he's thinking um, you know trying to pick up those antis at a frequent rate uh, keeping himself um, ahead with his win rate there so we do have one more hand to look at um, which we'll go and grab now so our last hand here is the ace five of hearts and we elect to open um, from middle position uh, cut off three bets us and we elect to choose uh, this hand as a four bet on this occasion and he does decide to call we see the five jack three with one heart and we plot middle pair and obviously that overcard on the backdoor flush draw um, we elect to check on this occasion for some pot control and our opponent checks behind now on the eight of hearts we could do a lot of betting um, but you know it is nice to have some flushes um, on the river when we check twice and also it's nice to be able to withstand some bets also when we don't bet either flop or turn uh, so we do decide to check on this occasion our opponent does bet um, now a lot of his strong hands probably would have bet the flop um, he may have picked up some hearts himself and um, there are lots of heart draws less available um, and we don't want him to give up with those hands on the river that he may well be priced into call and obviously his river shove sizing will not be very large after he bets this sizing on the turn so he may do a lot of giving up so on this occasion we do elect to to go all in now our opponent um is actually thinking on a much higher level than we actually originally thought possible um now he's thinking that and when he doesn't bet the flop he doesn't have obviously many sets or many strong jacks or many strong um, combo draws that he's going to be forced to call down with here um, so he is really light on value and um, when he decides to check back and and then jam this and then bet this this turn uh, so uh, apart from his heart draws there aren't many things that he can that he can call down with obviously he's gonna have a set of eight sometimes but not all the time uh, so um, when we when he gets jammed on here he doesn't really have that many good call down hands and he's thinking about this and, and he knows that he needs to find some extra hands to call down with to make sure that he's not getting exploited and run over in this spot and i really like the hand that he's chosen here the king queen of clubs um obviously you know he can beat things like six seven of hearts or spades um or maybe the ten nine of hearts or spades um that i didn't decide to bet either flop or turn with um, so those hands that definitely he's going to have some significant equity against um, and obviously you don't want to be getting run over so 
this seems like a very good hand to call given his range here and so he does decide to call down unfortunately on this occasion um he's not getting the kind of equity that he might have hoped for um and he doesn't make his king or queen on the river um but yeah but calling there obviously unblocking our bluffs um such as the, the the hearts and the spades that we that we may well have here seems a very good option to take and another thing that we can take away and learn uh, but that was the last hand um, and let's go and, uh, ahead and, and give some conclusion thoughts at the end here so as you can see uh, there are some very high level strategies being introduced to the 10 l games as we've mentioned not only do we have to beat the high rake but we also have to negotiate this very strong selection of opponents that are currently in the pool and luckily for me, I was able to come out on top for the most part, so I thought it would be best to break down these strategies in detail so that you guys are staying well informed and prepared. Thanks very much, guys, for watching the Christmas special of the Quarantine Grind and all my other videos. I really appreciate all the support, uh, likes and subscribers recently, and also please, please feel free to leave any and all comments and feedback you have about this video below. I'll be starting my new Play and Explain series in the new year, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, please stay safe and have a great Christmas. I'll see you next time. Thank you.